Jean-Baptiste Say was a French economist and businessman. He had classically liberal views and argued in favor of competition, free trade, and lifting restraints on business. He is best known for Say's Law, also known as the Law of Markets, which he popularized. Scholars disagree on the surprisingly subtle question of whether it was Say who first stated what we now call Say's Law. Biography Jean-Baptiste Say was born in Lyon. His father, Jean-Étienne Say, was born to a Protestant family which had moved from Nîmes to Geneva for some time in consequence of the revocation of the Edict of Nantes. Was also an economist. Say was intended to follow a commercial career, and in 1785 was sent, with his brother Horace, to complete his education in England. Here he attended a private school in Croydon, and was afterwards employed by a merchant in London. When, on the death of the latter, he returned to France in 1787, he was employed in the office of a life assurance company directed by Etienne Clavier. Say's first literary attempt was a pamphlet on the liberty of the press, published in 1789. He later worked under Mirabeau on the Courrier de Provence. In 1792 he took part as a volunteer in the campaign of Champagne. In 1793 he assumed, in conformity with the revolutionary fashion, the pre-name of Atticus, and became secretary to Clavier, then finance minister. In 1793 Say married M. L. L. E. Deloche, daughter of a former lawyer. From 1794 to 1800 Say edited a periodical entitled La Decade Philosophique, Littéraire et Politique, in which he expounded the doctrines of Adam Smith. He had by this time established his reputation as a publicist, and, when the consular government was established in 1799, he was selected as one of the hundred members of the Tribunit, resigning the direction of the decade. In 1800 he published in Albi, Aouessé sur les moyens de réforme les moyens de nation. In 1803 appeared Say's principal work, The Traité d'économie politique, How simple exposition de la manière dont chez formant, chez distribuant et chez composant les richesses. In 1804, having shown his unwillingness to sacrifice his convictions for the purpose of furthering the designs of Napoleon, he was removed from the office of Tribune. He then turned to industrial pursuits, and, having made himself acquainted with the processes of the cotton manufacture, founded a talkie, disambiguation needed, in the Pas de Calais, a spinning mill which employed four or five hundred persons principally women and children. He devoted his leisure to the improvement of his economic treatise, which had for some time been out of print, but which the censorship did not permit him to republish. In 1814 he availed himself of the sort of liberty arising from the entrance of the Allied powers into France to bring out a second edition of the work dedicated to the Emperor Alexander I of Russia, who had professed himself his pupil. In the same year the French government sent him to study the economic condition of the United Kingdom. The results of his observations appeared in A Tract de l'Angleterre et des Anglais. A third edition of the Traité appeared in 1817. A chair of industrial economy was founded for him in 1819 at the Conservatoire des Arts et Métiers. Equally in 1819 he is co-founder of ESCP Europe which became the first business school in the world. In 1831 he was made professor of political economy at the Collège de France. Say in 1828 to 1830 published his cause complete d'économie politique pratique. In 1826, he was elected a foreign member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. In his later years Say became subject to attacks of nervous apoplexy. He lost his wife in January 1830, and from that time his health constantly declined. When the revolution of that year broke out, he was named a member of the Council General of the Department of the Seine, but found it necessary to resign. He died in Paris on 15 November 1832, and is buried in the Cemetery of Invalides. Say's Law
He is well known for Say's law, often summarized as, aggregate supply creates its own aggregate demand, supply creates its own demand, supply constitutes its own demand, if you build it, they will come. Inherent in supply is the wherewithal for its own consumption. The exact phrase, supply creates its own demand, was coined by John Maynard Keynes, who criticized it. But this characterization is disputed as a misrepresentation by some advocates of Say's law. Similar sentiments, though different wordings, appear in the work of J. S. Mill and his father, James Mill. The Scottish classical economist James Mill restates Say's law in 1808, writing that production of commodities creates and is the one and universal cause which creates a market for the commodities produced in Say's language. Products are paid for with products, or a glut can take place only when there are too many means of production applied to one kind of product and not enough to another. Explaining his point at length, he wrote that, it is worthwhile to remark that a product is no sooner created than it, from that instant, affords a market for other products to the full extent of its own value. When the producer has put the finishing hand to his product, he is most anxious to sell it immediately, lest its value should diminish in his hands. Nor is he less anxious to dispose of the money he may get for it, for the value of money is also perishable. But the only way of getting rid of money is in the purchase of some product or other. Thus the mere circumstance of creation of one product immediately opens a vent for other products. He also wrote that it is not the abundance of money but the abundance of other products in general that facilitates sales. Money performs but a momentary function in this double exchange, and when the transaction is finally closed, it will always be found that one kind of commodity has been exchanged for another. Say's law may also have been culled from Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 11, when goods increase, they are increased that eat them, and what good is there to the owners thereof? Saving the beholding of them with their eyes, Say's law has been considered by John Kenneth Galbraith as the most distinguished example of the stability of economic ideas, including when they are wrong, quotes, on taxes, to encourage whale hunting, the English government prohibits vegetable oils which we burn in France in draft lamps. What results from this? That one of these lamps, which costs a Frenchman 60 francs per year, costs an Englishman 150 francs. The intention, some say, is to support the navy and to multiply the number of sailors. That each lamp nozzle costs Englishmen 90 more francs than in France. In this case, it is to multiply the number of sailors by the means of a trade that generates losses. It would be better to multiply them by a lucrative trade. A hard-working laborer, I was told, fancied working by candlelight. He had calculated that, during his vigil, he burned a four-penny candle, earning eight pennies by his work. A tax on tallows and another on the manufacture of the candles increased by five pennies the cost of his luminary, which became thus more expensive than the value of the product that it could shed light upon. From then on, as soon as night fell, the workman remained idle, he lost the four pennies which his work could obtain him, and without the tax service perceiving anything out of this production. Such a loss must be multiplied by the number of the workmen in a city and by the number of the days of the year. On property rights, there is no security of property. Where a despotic authority can possess itself of the property of the subject against his consent, 